Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C. Raptor, and today we're bringing you a first look at... Madre de Dios, I can't believe I'm about to utter these words. Tier 4 Soviet Russian aircraft carrier. This is, I believe I'm pronouncing this correctly, Komsomolets. Now, uh, you might be forgiven uh, for going, Soviet aircraft carriers? What in the hell, Raptor? Well... Yeah, we kind of all suspected this day was coming, right? When you, the introduction of basically all these different nations and their various navies into the game more or less means that sooner or later, Wargaming is going to dig deep into the archives of those various countries and navies and present us with designs and ships that they might never have actually built, but could have. You know, they were either technically capable of building or, or did attempt to design and, and, and try to try to make work. And we're starting to see what well, we've been seeing that for years, right? There's a variety of designs that have come to the game that was like, well, this was, you know, somebody's fever dream. And there are ships already in the tech trees going all the way back six years, right? All the way back to look at a ship like Rune and Hindenburg. Those are, you know, invented ships, right? Nobody com really seriously complains about them. But the reality is, is that those ships, I don't even think the designs existed. The turret design existed, just, just to pick on them a little bit. But now we're getting kind of more firmly into the realm of pure fantasy with some of the ships that we're starting to see. And one of the ships that we're going to look at today, in fact, this entire line, is Soviet Russian aircraft carriers. Yikes. Yikes. Now, as we go through this, a couple of things I want to make very clear here as we're talking about the Tier 4 carriers, okay? I have a very strong opinion about Tier 4 carriers. I do not believe they belong in World of Warships. I believe that we've, we've reached a point in the game where these carriers should be removed. We should not see carriers at Tier 4 and Tier 5. Carriers should start, the carrier branches should start at Tier 6, like you do, like they've said they're going to do, like they've been doing with submarines, okay? My personal opinion is you start carrier branch, the carrier branch at tier six, and then at that point, you have a carrier every tier because it's simple enough to do for most nations, right? The US and Japan used to have this already. It would probably not be a stretch to do it for the Brits. You'd probably have to do some fancy dancing to do it for the Germans and or the Russians here. But the bottom line is, my opinion, carriers do not belong in Tier 4 games, okay? So some of what you're going to hear me complain about, I'm making you aware of that bias up front. So when you hear me grumble a little bit, you understand why that is. So let's start looking around the ship. For starters, survivability like you do. 31,700 hit points. I mean, this is worse than Tier, but let's be honest, it's Tier 4, um... You don't really expect an aircraft carrier at Tier 4 to have a lot of HP or a lot of hull armor, and we'll take a quick look at the armor profile. Congratulations, it has the armor profile of a destroyer. The most armor she has is on her flight deck, right? You see there are 19 millimeters in the flight deck, 16 millimeters just about everywhere else, 13 millimeters is over some of the vital spots. This is, yeah, if you shoot at this thing, it's going to fold like a, like a cheap house of cards, right? She's going to blow up real nice. Shoot at this thing is like shooting at a Langley, right? In fact, if you look at the ship, it, very, it looks like a Langley. It's very obvious the concept for this ship is very similar to that of Tier 4 American carrier USS Langley. They took an existing, probably a merchant marine hull, probably a, some kind of transport ship, stripped all the superstructure on it, built this goofball flight deck on it, threw some planes on the deck, and called it an aircraft carrier. So when you shoot at it, it's gonna hurt. you're going to hurt it. It's that simple. Uh, destroyers will be able to send all this thing with ease, right? So no big deal. 7% torpedo protection. I mean, yay? Yay? Like, who cares? Like, ugh, it's tier four. Um, this is not best in tier. The Japanese, I'm sorry, the, the Brits and the Germans both have 16% torpedo protection. Their hulls, their tier four carriers are more or less like bespoke designed as carrier hulls. Um, Komsomolets here does not have this problem, so I, I wouldn't sweat it. Maneuverability and concealment. Now, continuing our Langley analogy, you see there a blazing 17 knots of speed. If you've played... Tier 4, Tier 5 lately, you've run into a low-tier aircraft carrier, and one of them just happened to be a Langley. Every time I see a Langley, I'm just like, you poor bastard, right? Because that guy can't escape anything. Like, American standard battleships can run down a Langley on the surface. Well, guess what? So they can do with consomolites. Now, the one, the one thing worth pointing out here is she is fairly stealthy. So while you're getting Langley-like speed, you're getting Hosho-like stealth, okay? This 8.8 .8 surface detection is tied for best in tier with Hosho for J in Japan and over the Japanese tech tree. So a full stealth rig will get this thing down to 7.5-ish uh, concealment on the surface. Okay, that sounds kind of nice, but the bottom line is, is that you, you know, 
Tier 4 Carrier is incredibly unforgiving. You don't want to make positional mistakes with your hull because as soon as you're shot at, you're dead. So, yeah, don't do that. Um, 640 turning circle, rudder shift. I mean, I, I can go into these numbers. Bottom line is, uh, it's a carrier, um, and it's very slow, so uh, don't be somewhere you're going to get shot at if, if you want to if you want to live very long. Um, we'll hit the other bits before we talk about the planes. A, defense. She has none. Not really. Um, you do have these um, three double 100 millimeter mounts. You've got one on the bow and two more on the stern. They look really pretty, but actually don't really accomplish very much, so... Yeah, I would not get excited about these things, okay? You've got one, I think it's one, yeah, one flak puff at 4.6 kilometers, 25 continuous DPS, you ain't shooting down planes, it's tier four, that's just the way it goes, okay? And of course, those same artillery guns um, do dual duty as secondary batteries out to, uh, what is that, four kilometers, woo! She does have some 130 millimeter secondary batteries, some standalones, also out to, woo, four kilometers. So yeah, don't get in a gunfight with this thing either. All right, so let's talk about her aircraft. Kamsomelets comes with three squadrons, as you would expect. Now, these are a little different than what we have used to seeing. Uh, you know, typically you're looking at, for uh, certainly with the you know, carry revamp, we've got attack aircrafts, rocket planes, torpedo bombers, and dive bombers. But the Soviets introduced something new. These are skip bombers. This mechanic was kind of tested for a while. First came to the game on tier 10 premium German aircraft carrier Max Immelmann. But now this is a feature of the entire, uh, entire Russian uh, aircraft carrier line. So let's have a look at these real briefly, starting off with the attack planes. Now, one of the things you're going to notice when we start talking about uh, Soviet aircraft is they're, they tend to be almost as squishy as or even squishier than the German planes. If you remember some of the highlight videos we did talking about the German aircraft carriers, you know their planes have extremely low health. The Soviets take that even to a new low. Most of the Soviet aircraft are even lighter in terms of HP than the Germans, which is really interesting. The other thing that you're going to notice there, look on the right, you'll see size of attacking squadron is uh, size of attacking squadron is four, size of attacking flight is four. This is another standard thing uh, with with uh, Russian aircraft carriers, Soviet aircraft carriers, is that the number of planes you put up in the air when you launch a squadron, that is your whole attack. You're going to get one attack out of that squadron, then you're going back to do something else. You could you could potentially, if you have the planes on the deck, run one more attack out of that squadron, but you will not be getting multiple attack runs out of the same squadron, which is a bit of a change from literally every other nation. So keep that in mind as we go through these planes, okay? Looking at the rockets here, you're putting up four in a squadron. Each rock, each plane puts out four rockets. Each rocket, 2150 damage for a max alpha hit of nearly 35,000. But of course, the dispersion, the new rocket mechanics, all of you, all of that's going to work against you here, okay? Um, the, the, the main feature of the Soviet um, aircraft squadrons seems to be large alpha strikes. So when you run the numbers, you're going to see huge potential alpha strike numbers out of these Soviet planes. But the trick is that, uh, you know, you got to land them for starters. And of course, chances are, depending on how you run the attack, not all your planes are going to survive to actually make the drop. One of the things that I'm, I kind of like about the design of the Soviet aircraft, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but think about if you are a screening destroyer or an aircraft, I'm oh, sorry, a, a destroyer or cruiser, right? Most cruisers a destroyer is easy, right? Like a ship like a kid, you can keep your A turned off. The Soviet carrier wouldn't know you were there until you flipped your A on and started shredding a squadron. That's easy. But imagine you are uh, a Cleveland, right? Or, or most, you know, most cruisers have an A range that matches their aerial spotting range. If the enemy carrier doesn't know precisely where you are, it will be very easy for him to stumble into your, your anti-aircraft bubble, take some damage, take some casualties... Uh, before he can weasel his way back out. So even if you are trying to screen a low health ship from one of these big Soviet alpha strikes, um, he if you if you position your ships correctly around uh, the target you're trying to kind of shepherd away, then it it you know you could do some really good work with the anti aircraft because these planes have fairly low health. Speed depends, right? For example, these Soviet rocket planes are fastest in tier. These 126 knots is a lot of speed, okay, uh, for tier four, but they are very, very fragile. So that's kind of that's, that's kind of the trade-off there. But anyway, it does allow you to actually set up some proper escorting and, and positioning and so on, especially if you're in a div uh, division. You can put some cruisers out front of something you're trying to keep away from these planes, and he's either got to take longer to approach um, or risk, risk running, you know, stumbling into uh, some of your anti-aircraft fire when he doesn't want to find it. 
But yeah, these rocket strikes, um, the rockets themselves are not quite best in tier in terms of damage. That honor technically still going to tier uh, tier 4 Japanese carrier Hosho, but we're only talking about 50 damage per rocket. The difference is that Hosho doesn't put nearly as many of these rockets down range. She only puts four into her reticle. Kamasama lets here throws 16 rockets into that same reticle. These things are probably really, really going to hurt light cruisers. I suspect you're still going to struggle to hit destroyers with them, just like you do basically all rockets these days. But um, that's speculative because I obviously haven't played the ship. Okay, have a look at the torpedo bombers. Torpedo squadron was recently nerfed down to this level. There's now only three planes in this attack squadron, and the damage on these torpedoes was nerfed down to, you see there, 3,333 per torpedo. That is um, not quite worse in tier, again, because the Germans exist, but it's just a bit above it. A couple of things I want to point out about Soviet torpedoes. One is the 41 knots of speed. That's a little above average. Uh, if you consider the German torpedoes are usually, they hit very lightly, but they're very, very fast. Um, they're like 50 knots. Okay, that's well above average. 35 knots being kind of much more typical out of the Americans and the British. The 40 knot base speed on the Japanese torpedoes at this tier is quite good. Um, the Japanese also basically have the hardest hitting torpedoes at this tier. Um, 5,400 per, per shot, putting two into the water with each attack. Well, actually, they changed that, didn't they? Either way, it's still they, those still hurt. Of course, the Soviets here now putting three into the water with each with each um, with each wave, and you're you're looking at a potential alpha of around ten thousand. But of course, that'll be tempered by torpedo protection and splash mechanics and all the other things. So these will still hurt, right? And and most tier four, tier five ish battleships will absolutely eat probably all three torpedoes. Um, and uh, you know, <laughs> there's no real AA to speak of in this tier, right? So yeah, the, your the, chances are these planes are all going to make it all going to get their fish in the water, and, and so on and so forth. Now, I will say, um, these are the slowest torpedo bombers at Tier 4, by just a smidge, right? Langley used to have this crown with 88 knots. You see there, Comsom lets 87 knots. So these are still big, fat, slow torpedo planes, as you would expect for biplanes. And lastly, the skip bombers. Now, I won't pretend that I'm an any kind of expert on the skip bomber mechanics, so don't, don't ask me to comment about that. What I'm going to comment on is the numbers, right? We're going to look at damage numbers, potential damage out of these attacks, and so on, all right? So, come someone let's puts up four of these planes, each plane with a bomb, so we're putting four skip bombs downrange into the reticle. Each bomb, you see there, 6,100 damage a pop, 32 millimeters of pen. That's enough to really slap around basically every cruiser and destroyer she might run across in her matchmaking. Um, the full alpha strike out of this should be a little shy of 25,000 damage. Um, the reality is you probably won't hit all four against anything, maybe like a battleship. You probably hit two or three. Still going to be a solid hit against most of the lighter targets you're going to run across. This is still technically less than the Alpha Strike off of Hermes's level bombers. That's the Tier 4 British carrier. But we all know when you look at how that reticle works, you pretty much won't land all of those bombers. So yeah, saying saying that it's easy, it's easier to land all four of these against a big fat target than it is to land all of Hermes's bombs. The other big difference here is that Hermes's bombs have only 18 millimeters of pen, which means that they'll pen basically destroyers in this tier and the occasional cruiser and basically no battleships. So dropping Hermes bombs on the deck of a battleship means well you're you're you're, you're going to shatter almost everything. You're looking for fires, you know. Dropping these skip bombers against a battleship, if you bounce them correctly up into his superstructure, he will take full pins. He will more likely take fires because you see there they have a 35% fire chance. So yeah, the Soviet planes in general seem basically built around one attack wave that has the potential, if it hits, to hit really hard. And then they have to go back to the deck, grab, grab a different squadron, and come back. Hmm. I'm... I'm a little skeptical of this mechanic. I like the idea of it because it's different than every other aircraft carrier, every other nation's aircraft carriers. I like that about it. Is it good for the game? <clears throat> this is where I struggle because um, the, you know, when the carrier rear work went in, one of the big things that was removed from the game was the giant alpha strike potential of carriers. And here we are and we're kind of reintroducing it. It's got a little more balance to it this time in that your a every plane you can shoot down reduces the impact of that alpha strike. So I like that, right? Um, that does equate it to the old alpha strike potential of the old carrier system. The difference was the big alpha strike came in from 12 or 15 or 16 planes, depending on what carrier you were up against, meaning that you had to shoot down a lot of planes to really uh, blunt an alpha strike if you were, like, say, an early game battleship getting triple torpedo bombed by a midway back in the day, right? Here, every plane you shoot down, you know, let's 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 use the let's use the the torpedo squadron for an example, right? You've got three torpedo bombers, three torpedo bombers coming in. If you shoot down even one plane, you've cut that strike in a third. 
that that feels nice, right? Like you, your AA has has definitely had meaning there. The trick is, and we didn't talk about that at the time, if you look at the range of those torpedoes, six kilometers. So a clever or efficient, uh, skilled, skilled is the word I'm looking for, a skilled Soviet aircraft carrier driver is going to get to a point where he will potentially attempt to launch these torpedoes from outside your AA range, depending on the ship, because some ships have ranges, AA ranges past this, um, but not at Tier 4, right? I'm talking about as we go up the food chain, right? As you go up the line, you know, the, the torpedo range stays constant. So as we're talking about tier eight ships, we're still going to be talking about six kilometer torpedo range, but we are going to be starting to run into ships at that tier that have longer than six kilometer AA bubbles, but they're, they're the minority, right? There are a handful that do this. So, yeah. So anyway, what I'm getting at is that, a, you know, a clever Soviet carrier driver, there's going to be the, that weird kind of balance of skill and attempt of, oh, let me try and torpedo him from outside of his AA range so I don't take losses or, you know, let me get these fish into the water on the extreme edge of his bubble uh, and so on and so forth at the same time. If you're paying attention to the strike, that means, hey, uh, turn your rudder, um, you know, make a make a make a um, a course change, and you might dodge most or all of the incoming torpedoes that were recently put into the water. So, a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more of a metagame, interesting thing going going on here with the Soviet aircraft carriers as we go through the line. Anyway, guys, there's our first look at Komsomolets. We'll have a look at Serov and the rest of the line as we go through the week. Appreciate you being here. Wash your hands. Be safe, and I'll catch you next time.